everybody. We're just waiting to, oh, we are live. So welcome back to Senate Education. It is Tuesday, uh, March 30th at 2.30 in the afternoon. And we have with us uh, President Garamella, the president of the University of Vermont, and Wendy Koenig, both of whom are going to talk with us a little bit about uh, how things are going. We would love a brief little update on how things are going at the university, as well as talk with us about your uh, request to appropriations. So with that, welcome, and the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Senator Campion and, and all the members. Um, truly appreciate your giving us a chance to speak with you. Uh, if your lives have been anything like mine, um, staring at Zoom screens isn't exactly fun, and we're doing too much of it. So I appreciate your spending another hour staring at us. Um, so we'll try to keep this as uh, productive and, and informative as possible. And um, I won't speak for long. I will be happy to answer questions. Uh, as you noted, Senator Campion, uh, Wendy's on the call and uh, is available to all of you as am I. So again, thank you for all the work you're doing. Um, sometimes when there's a lot of money, it's also, <laughs> it's not the easiest thing. It's, uh, there's a lot, there are, there are a lot of needs as well. So um, uh, I, uh, I'm happy to uh, talk about the current state of affairs at uh, UVM, et cetera, but uh, I'll focus my remarks on our ask specifically. Uh, and so as the uh, uh, American Rescue Plan has been passed in Congress, uh, we're asking for a part of the stimulus funds uh, for COVID recovery needs for UVM. Uh, we know that the ask we put together that all of you have is a large ask, but it truly represents our needs uh, coming out of this pandemic. These funds are critical to UVM now. Uh, we've, been excellent, we've been an excellent steward as, as, I, as I think you know of state dollars for a major economic driver in Vermont. However, the pandemic has underscored that higher education institution, including UVM have many areas of financial fragility. Um, while our base appropriations have not increased, uh, and you know, at some point we would also like to address that with, with uh, your committee. But for now, we're, uh, we're making the case that uh, investing these one-time funds in Vermont uh, and in, in the University of Vermont will help us recover from and weather the rest of the pandemic. Um, you have a, a table of, um, of the asks we came up with. Um, I, you know, I think of it as being primarily in uh, you know, a small number of buckets. One bucket that is most in, uh, you know, of, of, of most passion for me uh, that I'm most interested in is the student aid piece. Uh, as, as I think you know by now, we have focused our fundraising with our friends and donors also on student financial aid. We call that the SOAR campaign. Um, and with this and other efforts, we are holding tuition down, holding uh, room and board uh, flat, and you know, to the extent we can, cutting fees, et cetera. So to me, affordability uh, and accessibility is, is uh, central to providing the, our students the access they need to higher ed. Um, our enrollments have been relatively steady, but the need for financial aid for the families uh, has, has greatly increased due to uh, job losses and such during COVID. So we've put out a lot more financial aid for our students than we would in a regular year. Um, and so I, I hope that um, the, 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 the ask for support for um, students and families affected by uh, COVID is, uh, is something that, that appeals to you. Um, there are two pieces to this. One of them is, at least in, in my thinking, a good way to convert, uh, to, to, to utilize one-time dollars. One-time dollars come with a lot of challenges and can sometimes be put to perverse use. Um, we would like to put, um, we were requesting uh, a, a chunk of the stimulus funds that we can put into an endowment to support Vermont students. The, uh, the 22 million we've asked for that endowment will spin off a million dollars in perpetuity. So it essentially converts this one-time um, uh, stimulus funds into something that helps Vermonters for as long as uh, you know, 
we as long as uh, you know into the future as you can see so uh, that's a nice uh, long-term commitment to vermonters um, and of course as i said we've also been focused on affordability and access and so that has cost us a lot of money and that's the other piece of the financial aid piece uh, the second uh, invest second group i guess of the investment that we've requested is to uh, is also student centric and it's really to uh, make UVM more accessible to all 14 counties of the state. Um, the pandemic has taught all of us that hybrid learning models can assist underserved Vermonters, uh, whether some of them have challenges with the geography they're in, some of them other, have other needs. Um, if we can improve our offerings, our distance offerings, our hybrid offerings, our online offerings, I think it'll be very helpful for students across the state um, in particular, you've probably also heard me talk about the importance of getting our students throughout their four years into internships across Vermont so that they see a future for themselves in jobs in Vermont. And so too often and for too long, I think we've thought of internships as a summer thing. I would really like internships to be fall internships and spring internships. And yet those students should be able to take classes from UVM at the same time, so it doesn't add time to degree, they can continue to study while they are doing an internship in Brattleboro or in Newberry or whatever. President so, Carmilla, I'm, I'm yes. sorry to interrupt you uh, mid-thought, but I am getting uh, some questions from committee members uh, about a document that was sent. And uh, Jeannie, would you mind, I think it was sent to you as well. Uh, would yes. You I sent a copy of it to Jeannie. Great. Jeannie, would you put it up? Uh, I, I only just now got it, so I posted it, and it may take a minute or two for it to show up on. Right. Would you mind, Jeannie, just sending it around to all senators in their sure. email? Thank sure. you. Yeah. Um, thank you, Senator Campy. I'm sorry uh, if you didn't have access to it, and we can certainly no, I mean, discuss it may, the It may have been sent even earlier. Uh, it's mm -hmm. just yeah. that, uh, that time. Right. So, uh, um, so I, I'll just con uh, complete describing some of the some of the elements, and then um, happy to answer questions. And so again, um, we're we're seeking funds to support our remote learning infrastructure, the IT infrastructure in classrooms, the wiring, etc. Which uh, you know we did some band aid approaches during this last year. It worked okay, but if we're going to do this in um, in a in a real way to support um, students across the state. Uh, we need to put some more investment into that. Uh, and again, these are these will make permanent, have a permanent impact on Vermont. Um, and uh, again, you all know that our, our uh, uh, general fund has not increased, but these one-time dollars are a way to assist UVM when we, uh, when we really need most. And then um, we have a piece in there for research on uh, COVID, but also on uh, other kinds of, you know, opioid and other kinds of communicable diseases. This won't be the last time we, we have this kind of a challenge. And we, um, we receive funding, our faculty receive funding from NIH and so on, but the, the support we've asked for in the research space will be able to help us go beyond what NIH funds us for and have a Vermont focus to that research. And then the last category is in, um, you know, improving the work environment for our staff and faculty to improve the air quality, the ventilation, et cetera. As you know, many buildings at UVM are quite old and the pandemic has shown that, you know, ventilation and things are critical. So we would like to invest somewhat in there and improve that. And we've also got, um, we've made some serious progress recently in the green energy space in collaboration with, um, you know, Senator Sanders and uh, who helped us uh, work with Sandia National Labs and others. We brought a bunch of solar panels and such. We've got faculty with expertise in, in this distributed energy space. So those are, um, in my mind, areas that uh, have a lot of support uh, among Vermonters. And so I hope that the ask is, um, is targeted well. It certainly represents um, very sincere needs on our part and we appreciate your support and of course, as you've done in the past, we hope that um, after this conversation, you're able to provide a letter of support um, 
uh, in support of our ask. So, Senator Campion, I hope that um, serves as a, as a reasonable introduction, and I'm certainly happy to, and Wendy will uh, weigh in too as needed to address any questions you have. Yeah, no, I think that's that's very helpful. I'm, I'm, everyone now in their inbox uh, has the, um, the request and any questions for uh, President Garamella or Ms. Koenig. Uh, Wendy, were you going to add anything? Did you want to say anything um, additional uh, or? Um, I'll just put it out there that in our conversations um, with uh, folks in the House, my understanding is that House Appropriations is planning on um, starting next week on looking at a bill a COVID relief bill to, to work with the ARPA funds. And so um, we've put in the same request um, in House and Senate Appropriations and in House and Senate Education. We'll be speaking to the House Education Committee about it as well. Um, but I, I think that in terms of the timeline, I think House Appropriations will start working on this bill next week is what I'm told by the chair and vice chair, just so people have that context. Great, uh, Senator Persley. And then Senator Shinden. A question or maybe comment? Well, I guess a question and then a comment on the, some of the smallest asks on here. I think the three million dollars for renewable energy. You call it green energy, but I don't know what that means. The renewable energy is in here. You say. Uh, that you have a collaborate, ongoing collaboration or a relationship with Sandia. I remember Senator Sanders was trying to do some, is there actually an ongoing relationship with Sandia National Laboratories at the university? Yeah, Senator Pritchnick, so um, as you know, this is, there's been fits and starts in this space. We were supposed, I think this was supposed to be closed a while back. There was a whole bunch of solar panels that Sandia uh, had in, on their site. And um, we were working with, uh, well, Senator Sanders was helping us try to get some money from the Department of Energy to move those panels over here. But as it turns out, we couldn't get that funding. So we actually put up our own funds to transport the panels over. I think it was, a, I, I could be wrong, but $150,000 or so of an investment from us. But we're working with, um, uh, I mean, I, 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 uh, I serve on a, an honorary sort of an honorary capacity on uh, uh, as a on the research board for National Sandia National Labs and have a longstanding relationship with them, I do believe we can grow that. And there are obviously, as you know, um, companies with a lot of interest locally in uh, uh, sh making this a model, doing it as a research project, even to show how this can be done. And then we've got several faculty members who've been actually in the press quite a lot with uh, Texas issues. Um, because they're very good at uh, energy distribution and some of these intermittent sources and such. So yes, it's actually a strong um, collaboration that's moved forward. And even in the most recent engagement with Sandia, Senator Sanders and his staff have been uh, quite instrumental in expressing their support. Okay, well, that's good to hear. I'm, I'm hopeful of that relationship continuing. Yeah. I mean, I think you, you guys might be at your net metering cap. And so just as far as adding solar, you might not be able to do that. I'm, I'm not sure. I guess you could do it behind the meter, but I'd be interested in having the university do more on renewable energy on thermal and biomass, which is, you know, a local Vermont resource and something that I think we could be leaders on. It's, it's hard to, to really be a leader on solar up here in Vermont. Um, but, uh, and we're, we have a lot of other renewable electricity projects going on, but really not very many talking about how we're going to heat all our buildings, you know, and the fossil fuels that we're using for that. So, yeah, something else to think about uh, go forward. Yeah, if you don't mind, I will um, simply share that, uh, you know, a fair amount of my research and my other life has been dedicated to uh, thermal storage and thermal energy. I I've written many, many papers and have a lot of PhD students have done work in this area. So it's a it's an area of uh, particular interest when Representative Kirk McCormick had met me first. He um, we talked about district heating and I think he was sold. So um, I, I, I have a personal interest in this, uh, a fair amount of expertise in this. But I will say that to your point about, you know, solar may not be great for this um, for the state of Vermont as a matter of interest. 
you know, Germany, which uh, was far ahead on solar panels and does not have a great amount of solar insulation. And yet they showed that you can use this. Um, and so our faculty, as I understand, are actually looking to see how they can benefit even from solar panel, uh, you know, output in a state like Vermont. And so that's yeah. actually a nice pilot and demonstration project. You know, I, well, I meant on the, I know we can use a lot of solar, we could try to get up to Germany's level. It was more about trying to be a, like, as, as a focus of the research. I thought competing with other states on that would be difficult compared to, to thermal energy. Senator Chittenden. So I just want to say, I've said in this committee multiple times, I bleed green and gold. So this has my full support, President Garamel. I want to get, want you to get every single penny of this. So whatever that's worth for everybody hearing. I was going to comment on item three, but I also want to piggyback on what Senator Perchik was just mentioning as well as you. I know I've heard Rutgers University has solar panels over all of their parking lots, especially for the, uh, I would love to see the, the, parking lot in front of the water tower, the parking lot at Gutterson have solar panels, cantilever structures so that cars could park underneath it, protecting our cars from the snow while dual purposing those impermeable surfaces. So if we got to put solar panels anywhere, I'd love to see them over parking lots because I think it makes sense. And I'd love for UVM to lead the charge more on that. But for item three uh, on expanded technology for remote learning, I just want to commend what UVM has done. They pivoted ETS and did some great things. And one thing not in here that I, I expect to also probably fall into the fold is what they've done with application delivery, remote uh, desktop.uvm.edu, the backpack services. CIO Ananu has done some phenomenal work there. So I see new learning management system software. I, I hope that additional hardware is also going to support the continued virtual delivery of applications and software to support education. And I also said, as long as the voters let me serve in this role, I'm always going to plant the seed of knowing or exploring ways we can collaborate with the VSC and our data center mm -hmm. operations and aligning some of these initiatives so that they can piggyback and benefit from some of the, uh, the headway we, we blaze, the trails that we blaze on these important fronts. But again, every penny I support you getting, go UVM. Great. Thank you so much, Senator Chittenden. And um, the, uh, I, you know, let me just add to what you said, which is this virtualization of apps. It's something that I'm very proud of Simeon Ananu, who's uh, our chief information officer. He led this effort. These things aren't easy because people are unfamiliar with them and sometimes they want apps on their uh, computers. But if you actually centralize them, so to explain what he's done is, is, is essentially have a virtual environment anyone from anywhere can log into effectively. And even though these programs are not on their own machines and not being updated, et cetera, on their own machines, you can use the software remotely. It's a very good advance. Um, and and uh, because Senator Shiddenden teaches and has taught really well, even during the COVID period, he's presumably uh, used this technology and that's a big plus. So this virtualized atmosphere, uh, environment, we will continue to, to enhance. The learning management system, those kinds of things seem a little in the weeds and detail oriented, but unless you have a good LMS, um, any amount of technology or hardware isn't going to help us. So thank you so much, uh, sir, for your support. And um, we were, we're proud that you're in the Senate and on this committee. Great. Uh, Spresh, do, you mind, do you mind if I add one thing? Yes, of course. Uh, Senator Chittenden, I just wanted to mention when you're talking about um, the partnerships with the VSC that um, there's some money that's in a different bill that's, it's, I believe, H-159. Um, that is the workforce bill and there's some money for the Vermont State Colleges and for UVM to offer free courses for people that are trying to recover from COVID and need some um, extra help with um, unemployment or underemployment. And so we put in um, with actually Senator Baruth a project and our project is based on partnership with CCV. So we will be partnering with them to offer those courses to people um, for the next two years who need COVID recovery help. So I just thought you might be interested in that. Senator Lyons. We're well, all very proud that you're in the Senate as well, Senator Lyons from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to say there isn't much left to say. I think everyone has been, has uh, identified some really important um, asks that you have made. Uh, 
I'll just, and I think the last comment that Wendy made is, is critically important, having the relationship with VSC, but in particular with CCV, where they're doing so much great work, online work. Um, mm -hmm. So I did also want to, um, I do have a comment and a question. So the comment is on the communicable disease research, and I think that's really laudable. Uh, I'm assuming that it would be in the um, is it in the medical school? Is it in, uh, in the Department of Microbiology? Where is it, or is it going to be in animal sciences? It could be just about anywhere given the, uh, the, the, the COVID uh, virus. Senator Lyons, um, we have, as you, as you well noted, um, expertise, many pockets of expertise. And one thing that we're trying to do, we've been trying to do in the last year or so, you'll be proud to know that our research expenditures. We've not announced that yet, so keep it to yourselves. Um, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> You're are, talking to- up 41% this last year. We, and it has come primarily because people are working across silos and we want to continue to enhance that. And so, yes, there's a lot of pockets of expertise. We're really well known, as you know, the AstraZeneca vaccine is being, um, uh, you That's know, right. the, the clinical trials being done here, Beth Kirkpatrick and people like this. You know, one of the things I feel blessed about is as we have tried to, um, well, adapt to or battle COVID, I have had amazing folks like Jan Carney on public health, Beth Kirkpatrick, and, you know, with, uh, with, the, with the expertise on the virus to, to look to. And so, um, and, and, and several of them have good NIH funding already. And so what this would do is to add to their existing projects so that they can bring a Vermont lens to their research which I think actually, um, you know, sort of enhances greatly the impact of, uh, of the dollars you put in because they're, they're uh, matching the federal dollars, but it'll sit across the, the disciplines that you mentioned. So two questions, I guess. Uh, one is about the thermal um, energy and if there's any continuing discussion on getting the, uh, using the heat from the um, wood burning plant in the intervale up either to the hospital, I don't know whether, or into some of the um, buildings at UVM. Is that still a discussion or? So, so I, I probably never had a conversation with uh, Kurt McCormick without talking about that project. I know okay. that the medical hospital, et cetera, have had some more recent conversations on this. Some of the challenge in bringing it up to UVM per se is that there are millions of dollars of, um, of capital costs to put in to, to cart that steam up here or the heat up here, but there do seem to be more uh, narrow pockets of conversation going on. I believe the medical um, center is in current conversations and we can give you an update um, as this progresses. Well, I, I mean, the first time we started talking about this, uh, it was not, that many millions of dollars, and then it went to $10 million, and I have no idea what it is now, but it'll continue to go up, so. Yeah. But my question is on the $22 million for endowment that you've been talking about, and then realizing the a million dollars, how many students would that benefit? What, what's, the, what's the payout on that for, on a yearly basis in terms of human support right. capital? Right. That's a great question. Um, you know, this will be one of the pieces. So a couple of things, as, as I've said before, 45% of Vermonters attend paying no tuition at all, um, attend UVM that, and pay no tuition at all. And therefore we're trying to address the, the others that and try to help them. Of the others, most of our students receive um, scholarships, a fair amount of financial aid. So it's not like we're starting from scratch. But having this million dollar pay, by the way, the calculation is simply a four and a half percent right draw on the 22 million. That's how the million dollars comes out to be. And um, so this alongside uh, our SOAR uh, fellowship, uh, for SOAR scholarship um, uh, campaign, which stands for student opportunities. I should have remembered what it stands for. Um, Student Opportunity Access and Recruitment Initiative. So it's, uh, it's, I have told our foundation that this is my top priority. And we've, uh, we've, we've set a $150 million goal there. Um, 
It has pieces in it for underserved and underrepresented folks. It's called the President's Our Common Ground Fellowship. Um, it's got pieces for Vermonters because a lot of um, our friends and folks who give to us uh, are often from Vermont. They've moved on to other states and want to help others. Um, and so those get a lot of um, traction with, with those that are giving. So I think each of these pieces will help. But the million dollars that the, endow the, the endowment we're requesting from you, um, as you know, the in-state tuition is on the order of you know sixteen to eighteen thousand dollars. So it would fund five, but it's not quite so. Um, you know, we've already got partial funds. We've got Pell grants for some of these people. I'm very proud of um, for a school like ours, the number of students who are Pell eligible at UVM is quite high compared to our peers in a similar situation. So they're already getting some support and we would be supplementing them. So I suspect this will touch 25 students or so a year, something like that. But we will bring other resources to bear. I mean, ultimately I hope that we can have all Vermonters who have need um, receive that need from UVM. Thank you. Related to the, the endowment piece, um, I know that we've heard that the state can't necessarily endow things for the future with federal funds. Do you know, so, and I'm sure appropriations will, will pull this uh, apart, but perhaps it's being seen differently because it's being given to the university and then the university is taking that, those one-time funds, if you will, and endowing something. Um, yeah. Senator Kempi and I, I had the same question. And as you know, our CFO is Richard Kate has worked in the, in the state government for a long time. And he said that there are um, instances, there is at least one instance he mentioned where something like this was done. And we believe, and Wendy may, may be able to add, we believe that precisely as you said, because these are one-time funds from the federal government passed through, um, that this is an allowable uh, expenditure. I agree. Yeah. Great. Um, other questions? Could I come back to one thing which yeah. Senator Chittenden said, sorry, uh, on the Rutgers example of solar panels on every parking lot. Um, Senator Chittenden, you may, um, I don't know if uh, you would have a reason to remember, we discussed this at the, at the board meeting. Um, there was, I, I don't remember the name of the um, private uh, entity that uh, was, was going to, um, so we were going to lease or not lease, but let them use our land and and put solar panels. Um, I, I don't remember all the facilities details, but we are looking for partners to come and um, put these things on. There was that one nice example. Um, it was uh, revenue neutral for us. It wasn't like we were going to make money off of it, but we were going to let them put it, put it on and then have the um, power generated feed into the um, grid and let the company who's installing it use it. So. We, we do have an example that, um, uh, that, that we went through about, about a year ago. Great. So these are again, uh, in our discussions, these, are, these represent your top priorities at this point with regard to these funds. Um, and uh, no, this is, this is great. I, I Thank you. I think I have the, I mean, Part of me would uh, in some ways love to uh, have seen something here related to water, uh, but I also know you're doing a lot on water and Lake Champlain and uh, and I certainly trust all of you to come up with your own priorities. Uh, but um, perhaps at some point in my other committee we'll we'll get an update mm. from the university on on some water quality work that I know that I know again is happening there. Yes. Yeah. You know, water was the first thing that occurred to me when I came here. Not surprisingly, you fly over it. So um, all along, early on in my time here, I used to say, look, um, you know, a student, any student around the country, New, you know, Arizona, New Mexico, whatever, or from Colombia or Peru, who wants to study freshwater should come to UVM because we have this great um, living laboratory that we've done a lot of work with, as you know, um, we're also uh, not far from, I keep seeing pictures regularly. It's my one happy time every day. I have a lot of unhappy times, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so is when I see pictures of this um, uh, electric vehicle being built, electric boat being built, mm -hmm. uh, and we should be able to, 
uh, inaugurated soon. It's the, it's a one of a kind. And so indeed we're doing a lot of work in this area. I can also share with you that we are, uh, we continue to work with Senator Leahy's staff uh, in other research appropriations that um, they can help us with so that we can continue our leadership in the water area, but, but water writ large, right? Not only limnology in the lake, et cetera, but, but um, phosphorus runoff and right. you know, all kinds of effects, in, including equity and parity and all that. So that is of great interest, um, certainly to me and to us. It'll be, it, uh, we're in the process of identifying three or four major sort of research thrusts and water you will see will be one of them would be ready within about a, about a, a month. And um, the priorities we put forth here are very um, consistent with and resonant with our Amplifying Our Impact um, strategic vision, which is fundamentally about students and then about these kinds of, and our people, et cetera. So um, we are, uh, water is uh, front and center in my mind and for our research. I just, we had to pick and choose I will say, and it's slightly cheeky, but you know, by all means, put on a ten million dollar thing for water, and we won't say no. But you know what I'm. Uh, no, absolutely. To choose I, I appreciate all of your priorities. I, you know, in in particular near and dear to I think all of our hearts is the financial aid priority, making sure. sure that students that should be at UVM need to be at UVM can be at UVM, right. and that is that that I very much appreciate. Appreciate uh, Senator Hooker. Just with regard to the priorities, I I certainly would love to see all of these things funded, but and we we are looking at an inordinate amount of money as far as the legislature is concerned. But are these? Can you rank these in case you know you have to drop some off? Yeah. So that would be something that perhaps you can come back to us with and uh, let us know. Of course, it's it's a great question, Senator Hooker. Um, I can share, I think it's okay to share that I was speaking with um, Senator Kitchell yesterday and wisely she asked the same question. And mm -hmm. so um, I understand. I know there's a lot of asks and a lot of um, directions you're pulled in. Um, I read about them too. And uh, I do hope that um, as a one-time thing, as, as a state sort of flagship and you know the economic driver and all that, and, and, and as a reward, if you will, for you know, the COVID performance, the fact that we have saved all our permanent jobs, et cetera. Um, I, I hope that there'll be strong consideration. However, to your point, I would say that the table is laid out um, loosely in priority order. I, if, if, you, if, if I had to pick, I have to pick the financial aid for students, yeah. right? I mean, it is central to everything I've talked about always. And then the IT infrastructure and remote learning is all about students. So really the first page of that, uh, of the two page table um, is central to our, our core value. And so that would be my top priority, but of course they're all um, very important needs. Great. Thank you so much. Any other questions or comments? Okay. President Garamella, Ms. Koenig, thank you both very much for joining us. Uh, we'll be in touch with any additional questions as well as uh, be in touch with uh, Senator Kitchell uh, as they make their way through this work. Thank you so very much for the time. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Uh, switching back to uh, school construction, uh, we heard from uh, Mr. Carroll uh, with his suggestion um, asking the uh, Agency of Education to be charged with the work um, that is currently written in the bill as the work for the State Board. And uh, we'll discuss that with Mr. Demaray at some point, but I will uh, just let people marinate on that um, to see if there are any concerns. And when we have Jim in to work on edits, we'll put that uh, on the list of things to consider. In the meantime, we will hear now from uh, Mr. Fannin. Jeff, great to see you. Thank you for having me back, Senator, and uh, welcome back, everybody. Um, so uh, for the record, Jeff Fannin, Executive Director of Vermont and EA. Um, I'm here today to talk about H-426, uh, what's commonly referred to as a school construction bill. Um, 
and uh, we didn't testify in this in the house. So I'll just be candid with you. This is the first look we've had at it. Um, and I'll just step back a piece, you know, the moratorium, um, it, we think it's important to lift it in some capacity or another. This is the, an effort to do so. We think that's really important. Uh, school equity or equity in, in education not only means um, opportunities, but, but it also, in this case, means physical buildings. And, uh, you know, as we've seen in some schools, uh, most notably in Burlington, you know, when schools start to, crum start to crumble and we start to having problems with them, uh, it's, it affects kids' learning. You know, they, they've, they had changes in their, their day to day. They're now in a new building entirely that's not built for any education, but, but it, they're doing the best they can. And that's great. But uh, it does have an impact on the ability of children to learn and adults to teach uh, and, and work with kids. So <clears throat> we, we certainly support having adequate and properly uh, maintained schools and support the bill for that regard. I had not thought, you know, as I read the bill, um, you know, having the state board more involved is, uh, is kind of a head scratcher in some sense of the word, given what's transpired over the last few years. So I'd have to give that some more thought. It sounds like one of your earlier witnesses did so already. Yeah, um, uh, John Carroll was in and, and he, okay. he was oh. concerned uh, and, and uh, felt as though those, those responsibilities really should fall with the agency of education. I'm not necessarily uh, at all sure. I don't agree with uh, my friend, John Carroll and in that regard. Um, so I, I think that probably does make sense to have the the agency who's got potentially the resources, assuming they do have the resources right. uh, given to them, um, might might be the better place for it. Um, so I, I really don't have a whole lot to say about the bill, and I'd be rambling on and wasting your time. We do support uh, you know, the effort in H four two six. Now is the time. You know, in some sense of the word, we've we're, we've got federal monies that can be used, and particularly with air quality, air ventilation is huge, and I know it's part of this bill. And that's a good thing. Um, and as we've hopefully come through this pandemic, uh, we know now that ventilation is really important uh, and, and making sure that we have adequate air supply. And I will just divert for a quick second. The reason I do what I do, uh, and I got involved in labor unions many, many years ago, was that I um, worked in the sheet metal work in Washington, D.C., where I grew up. And I became a member of local 100 sheet metal union workers. And after one summer of doing that, working hard, building a building, 1001 Pennsylvania Avenue, that still stands to this day. Um, <clears throat> I, the you following mean, summer. You're I, talking about the Fannin building, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. I wish. I wish. Uh, it is not my building. But uh, the next year I got into air balancing. Huh. And that is um, where your office is roasting and my office is freezing. And they balance the air and it's, it's air quality. It's, it's air machinery that, that moves the air around. Yeah. And I'm still in close contact with some of the people there that I grew up with and, and uh, think fondly of. And they, they ground me as they still work with tools every day. Um, and, but ventilation is really, really important. And we know it more and more as buildings becomes tighter and tighter with uh, insulation. That, uh, is, so this is a really growing field, if you will. And in a very important one, we have proper air exchange. And so if you're not getting proper air exchange, you get drowsy, you get tired, you get the wrong mix. And, uh, and that's bad for learning, we found. So uh, it's not only pandemic related, but it's going forward that we have proper ventilation for many hosts of reasons. And uh, um, so I support that aspect of the bill very much so personally and professionally. I think it's the right thing to do. So with that, I'll stop and, and uh, stop the diversion. No, it's very helpful. And I think you're absolutely right. I'm just thinking about, I think we can all share our own personal experiences, whether when we were children in schools or now as adults, as it relates to that air quality and, and how um, it can be quite distracting and pull away from, from, from learning. Uh, Senator Perchlick, were you going to ask a question on this? I was, how did you know? It's just a hunch. <laughs> it's, it's a gift, you know. When, uh oh, oh, I think I'm being set up here. <laughs> when you become a when you become a giant set. And then I know somebody else has a question that I <laughs> emailed them. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead, Senator Perslick. Um, I just, and I think I asked this when we had the walkthrough, but I can't remember the answer. So maybe Jeff knows. Where do I find the school construction facility standards? 
are they a board rule or is that something because they have to update them in this bill but i didn't even know we had such a thing you know uh senator that's a great question i don't know the answer i want to try to i can find out for you and i'd like to know myself frankly so i will uh, i'll figure out where they are okay thanks yeah, and I apologize if you asked that of me and I didn't get them. Um, but yeah, if Jeff, if you don't mind uh, doing some digging and send them along to us, that would be great. And if you have any difficulties, let me know. And I'm happy to uh, have uh, Mr. Demaray also uh, take a look around. Okay. Yeah, I asked Wasserman. Oh. I don't think she knew either, but maybe she, I can. Okay. I think I could find out, but, but certainly I, I'll endeavor to, I need to. Okay. Any other questions uh, for Mr. Fennin on this bill? Jeff, anything else for us on this bill or, or anything else that, you know, uh, I think we're going to have you um, back in later this week to talk with us a little bit about S75, which uh, we'll be getting an email about. This is the bill on testing for dyslexia. We also um, have other house bills that I know we'll be asking you to to weigh in on as we uh, advance them. Right, yes, uh, happy to appear. It's been, a, it's it's tough in this environment, but happy to jump in when I'm able. So thank you for inviting me. No, thank you very much. Okay, seeing no other questions. Great, have a good afternoon, Jeff. You as well, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, related to all of this work, uh, I've spoken with Senator Lyons, uh, who is, as we all know, the chair of health and welfare, we are going to have uh, the Department of Health uh, in Mr. Englander later this week to give us a broad update on, you know, we've heard a little bit about air quality, but so specifically PCBs, radon and lead and, and just health of our school buildings, where we're struggling and where we might need um, to put, um, put additional efforts. Uh, Committee, I think uh, I will touch base with Senator Kitchell as it relates to UVM's work. I think what she will probably be looking to us for is some kind of endorsement or concern. Uh, yes, related to uh, UVM's request, Senator Lyons. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to be asking Joint Fiscal Office the question about the endowment and whether right. that is a, actually a legitimate use of the ARP. Um, it, it opens up many questions about how we might use some of the federal dollars. And I haven't excluded thinking about what's going on right now with the retirement fund. Right. No, but, the opportunities, if this is green lighted in some way, Yeah huge opportunities. Um, totally. If, so I, I really appreciate your willingness to ask JFO that. Um, I'm, I will I will do that. I will do that. Lines, if you would prefer, it's completely up to you, but I can also um, have them into committee to answer that question. Well, if, you know, I think it's a good question to ask before they come in, uh, just to, you know, right. get them prepped up and see what the guidelines are. Right. If, if, uh, you know, if Wendy has indicated that it's been identified as a use, uh, what is the difference between the endowment and the investment that we're talking about with uh, our teacher's retirement fund? Yeah. And I would probably set that one at a slightly higher priority. I'm with, with all due respect to the kids, uh, uh, it's it's just unfathomable that this is not that we can't solve it. It's just it's so difficult. No, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Senator Persler. Um, yeah, what was my question? Oh, on this uh, request from UBM, maybe you said this at the beginning. I'm sorry if I missed it. Are is our committee going to give a recommendation? Was this just a FYI because it's the university or is there a process that we would go through to where this committee would actually send a letter or something to appropriations? I'm inclined to think, uh, and I've not spoken with uh, Senator Kitchell about this, but I'm inclined to think it would be, uh, they're going to be looking for something formal. Um, 
you know, some kind of, hey, this, this is a, a green, we're giving the green light or we have concerns or we've raised these questions. Uh, anything else that we can do for appropriations to help vet this is the kind of thing I think uh, I'll talk to Jane about at four today. Does that make sense? Is that helpful? I mean, I kind no, of- no. That's helpful. But in this case, it'd be the green and gold light. Yeah. So <laughs> this being this being your last day on committee, I uh, <laughs> uh, no, you're you're absolutely right. It is the green and gold light. Great. Um, Senator Hooker. I I was just thinking going back to Senator Lyons' idea of finding out from JFO whether or not the ARPA money is is yeah. usable for other purposes. Um, certainly Senator Kitchell will be interested in, in knowing about those things. And when we look at these um, asks from UVM and, and uh, she asked and we asked, you know, what are your priorities? Then maybe we, we do have an opportunity here to say, well, we can do this this year and use some of the money that's coming from the federal government. So yeah, if there's a possibility to use monies for remedying the huge problems that we have, certainly that should be at the top of our list. Yeah, and I'm, I'm inclined to think that, uh, you know, just layperson's thoughts on this were, well, even if we are appropriating it to UVM and letting them use it, just, you know, endowing something, I, I think Ginny's right. Let's check with JFO because I feel like we've been here and I, at least I keep hearing no, that just can't work. So I think we should really check in. Uh, Senator Lyons. Yeah, no, it just, it, it, it clearly depends on how the uh, pandemic links in with the need. Uh, you know, I would think so, uh, but it, it, an endowment like that doesn't necessarily I, I'm not sure that it required a pandemic for the need to appear. So similarly, I don't think that um, the retirement fund, the retirement fund actually has taken a dive. So with, with um, the pandemic. So I think there might be a closer link. link. I don't know. I, I, I just, I don't want to be told no before I even, uh, before the question is explored. That's all. Yeah. yeah. It gives hope though, that the university yeah. thinks that it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I will, uh, be in touch with Senator Kitchell to get additional details on what she is looking for. Um, I do anticipate us, uh, formalizing either an endorsement or listing concerns. Um, Senator Lyons, thanks so much for checking in with JFO, as well as uh, Senator Lyons, your idea about thinking about language to um, use some of these uh, federal funds for an audited agency of education. I think those are, those are I think that was a, a great suggestion. Um, and so I'll work with Jim a little bit to, at, 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 on that and see if I can come back to the committee with some draft language and see if we can maybe find a vehicle for that at some point. I think that's, uh, that was great. Um, okay, uh, Mr. Demaray, welcome to uh, Senate Education. We hope I, you're, I think you've been in house education quite a bit. Uh, I have. And I suspect they are applauding our good work uh, that we have sent them. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Anybody? They vote most of it out today, or will that happen tomorrow? Uh. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Uh, what I thought we would just have you here for, Jim, uh, before we leave uh, for the day is, I just wanna go back to civic education. We've heard a lot on civic education. We've had a lot of witnesses in, we've had different ideas, and I'm just wondering where the committee might be on this issue. And is there something that we might want to uh, get drafted uh, or not? Um, to me, it's, it's a big, big issue. I, I would like to do something meaningful. I don't wanna just do something to do something. And I have a few ideas, but um, I, uh, or one idea, but I, and it's kind of stole it from Senator Perchlik. Uh, I don't know if he remembers mentioning it last week, but that's just where I'm. At. I would love to know where everybody else is at. 
Senator Chittenden, you believe green and gold and civic education. Any thoughts? I'd love to hear what you were floating around with uh, Senator Perch. Like I, I, res I have the same concerns with the bill as presented as I did when it, we discussed it months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can no, go what, over the concerns if you want. But. Yeah, no, what Senator Perch like had mentioned last week, which I just, which I thought was really um, insightful was, you know, we were here with literacy also, you know, it, it, and what we worked on with literacy is training teachers and getting teachers the resources and, and is there a way again to, and I'm not sure, is there a way to facilitate something um, to get us, you know, teachers, I, I think broadly, no matter what the, the subject area, whether it's, you know, science or math or languages, civic ed, are there ways for us to, um, you know, just help give teachers the tools they need to be as effective as possible in the classroom and civic ed or uh, literacy, you know, there's there's specific things that teachers will learn that will get to them to that point. There might be things related to civic ed as well and other things. Uh, and that's just a broad thought. I just thought it was very insightful, you know, for us, like, or very interesting for us to be thinking about that. Again, is there a way to mirror those things? I agree at passing a class is not where I'm at. It's more giving people the tools to do the work. Um, Senator Lyons. So um, I know that I, one of your suggestions was to have some of the students, the mm -hmm. high school students actually um, work together to identify some of the practices that have helped them. And I, I think that is probably a piece of a, of a, I think it's a great idea and I think it's an important uh, part of it. And I, but I also think, um, could, is there any money available? Okay, ready for this one? Sure. Uh, so the pandemic has highlighted the need for a democratic process. We've had some uh, Department of Health uh, oversight and guide guidance rule, rulemaking and direction that is slightly different from what we usually have in the democratic process. So we could link this to the pandemic. That was, that's what I'm trying to do with that statement. Mm -hmm. And we could say that we could use some of the ARPA funds for um, a, uh, an, send, have an RFP go out and ask for many schools or many organizations related to schools to, um, put in place um, opportunities to share best practices around civic education. And so, you know, within that you could put, you could have kids embedded in that process as much as possible. But I think, you know, then it gets at the whole uh, concept of uh, teacher development, um, faculty development, so I'm, just, I'm thinking about how to use some of the money that might be available to us, could be ESSER funds, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but to, um, to go broadly across the state, I know we had the one group of kids in and they were terrific. Yeah. And, and the teacher there is uh, just outstanding in what he's yeah. done with the kids. Yeah. So that would be one school that might want to apply for a, a small grant to put on a, a webinar or to, I, I don't know what, but they'd have to create it. So just, that was one thought. Um, I like, yeah, I, so just to clarify a little bit. So this would be, you know, schools could get some dollars that would allow them to, somebody like Matt uh, Henshin and his students to um, put on, you know, some kind of webinar or podcast or something about how they, the work that they are doing so that other schools could benefit from that. And, and again, sort of take some of those ideas and implement them. Yeah. Or, you know, it could be that they're, that they write up what they do uh, mm -hmm. and they, or they have a video about what they do. I mean, it could be just any, uh, it could be a, a broad range of creative opportunities for, um, schools or it could be the NEA or, you know, it, it could be an institution of higher education. Mm -hmm. So it, I don't know how broadly we would cast the net, but um, 
just thinking that there might be a number of op folks who would uh, be interested in sharing. And then work. maybe there would be a, a website where it could be where these could be shared and teachers could go to these sites, possibly. I, I just, again, thinking aloud where they yeah. might download if they're teaching the Federalist Papers, they could download something that's there that other Vermonters are, are doing. Yep, could do that. Um, yeah, it could be in person. We don't know what's coming. Yeah. So, yeah. Senator Hooker and then Senator Purcell. Um, I was really impressed certainly with the those young people and with their teacher but i also noticed that both matt henshin and representative mook commented on the need for content mm -hmm. and when i think of content i you know i i love the idea of the activities and and the action um that these kids were involved in. And I think many schools have them. I know that here in Rutland, we've had teachers who have been very involved, but it's always a, a segment of the kids who gravitate toward those yeah. courses and those classes and those activities. And so thinking about the idea of the need for content, um, I'm thinking specifically the need for knowing what democracy is, you know, knowing what the Constitution says, things like that. And I don't know how, and I'm, I'm struggling to figure out how we can incorporate those things for the broader student body, not just as kids who are naturally inclined to be involved in those things. So I'm hoping we can come up with some ideas because I think that, you know, not a you know, everybody, nobody wants a class, you know, right. you have to pass a class, but right. there's got to be some way that we can do that. And with regard to teaching across the curriculum, I mean, we did this, you know, we've been doing this for years in schools. You're teaching reading in every subject. You're teaching math in every subject. You know, when we did, uh, I taught Treasure Island, and at the same time, the math teacher was teaching coordinates and, you know, and, and uh, the the science teacher was teaching about wind directions and you know things like that so yeah. i think there's a, a place for teaching civics across the curriculum but you, you need kind of a core of um information that differentiates or even compares mm -hmm. democracy to other forms of government yeah senator Persler? Yeah, I like this conversation and in regards to the bill, what I'm still having difficulty squaring is kind of what we're hearing from AOE of saying, well, it, all this is in there, teachers just have to do it. And I think that's mm -hmm. kind of what Senator Hooker was saying. If you have a great teacher and some interested students, you can have a really great program uh, and, you, and you're meeting the performance-based standards. So anybody could do it now. So. Uh, you know, I, I kind of agreed with what the students in Henshin was saying. It's like, well, we need a year of civics and a need a year of history, but I'm not sure that's really going to change much. And that's kind of what I am hearing from, from AOE or what they sent us saying, like, well, that's all kind of in here. We just call it different things. So I'm not sure where to go on that, but I, I like the idea of, of figuring out some, some other ways of, of just supporting the schools that want to do more in this as, as maybe a, a first step. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm looking, I know Senator Hooker and Senator Lyons, both long time teachers and Senator Lyons, I suspect teaching science, there are things that you could share with people that you found to be particularly effective when teaching science. And I think Senator Hooker, you're having taught Treasure Island and I mean there are there are certain things I mean right I mean it's kind of goes back to this literacy thing are there way are there ways that we can help and support and give teachers the tools and get it and kind of make it almost so I'm, I'm a little stuck on the Federalist Papers right now but you know if we could help teachers to understand uh, teach them you know a good way not help them to understand but an effective way to teach the Federalist Papers at any grade, you know, and, and 
that that information could even be out there, but maybe part of this work is help giving money to curate this information and make it, it more accessible. I, I, I'm not sure. Um, Well, yes, Senator Hooker. I, I just want to um, mention that, you know, we're talking in terms of high school kids and, you know, what they're doing, but mm -hmm. maybe, you know, this starts in grade school. This starts in preschool. I, uh, I forgot the name of the organization that sent me a book that I could go and read to uh, kids in elementary school about the young girl who goes to Washington. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it starts early so maybe we need to have something that's in place all along and uh, yeah. that way you've kind of build on the information that you have and by the time you get into junior high and high school you're ready to do that active um, lobbying and yeah. uh, and, and we have already i do believe even the literacy work we've done is a step toward better civic engagement. I mean, making certain that young people can read and write and communicate, that's, that's really, uh, really important. I do think though there's, and I guess I, I'll keep thinking about it and everyone can keep thinking about it. There is something that also does excite me about the idea of a bunch of young people getting together with maybe, I don't know if it'd be somebody from the agency, but asking and having, a dialogue and not calling a summer study call whatever you want but uh with a little money to get together on zoom and really hammer out and ask each other the questions and come back to the legislature with the hey how do we get high school students engaged how do we get students who are right out of college engaged how do we keep that engagement what are the things that you're all seeing out there that you know concern you excite you I, there is you know we we don't you know, these are the, the 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 people that we're trying to engage more, and they they need to be at the pay, table to to help us. And I thought Mr. Henson's students were great, um, and, and just doing more of that, I think we I for one would learn a lot for um, in terms of direction. Go ahead, Senator Hooker. Governor's Institute. Yep. Know, yep. They do it. So yep. maybe we could send a bunch of kids to Governor's Institute and have yep. them talk about this specific topic. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, there's already a structure there. And, and this may have even been mentioned by one of you uh, when we were having this conversation. Is there a Governor's Institute on civic ed? And again, like you said, we don't want it to be just the, you know, those students that are always going to go for it because they're, they're just really interested. They've got the, the commitment, they've got the time, but what about those students for whom it isn't you know, their instinct to, to go in that direction or might need a little more encouragement. So you get those students who, you know, might be more reserved or, or whatever, or don't have the resources to do it, um, to jump into these kinds of things. So, so Governor's Institute is, is an interesting idea. Okay, so I, I think we'll just keep, give it some more thought. We can come back to it. Um, I'll give it some additional thought. Uh, and maybe Jim, you can stay on the line after this uh and you and i can maybe hammer out something uh some kind of draft idea and we'll just kind of keep it going okay any questions going forward kind of a busy week uh taking on house bills etc okay Great. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for a good afternoon. Interesting conversation and look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Thanks so much. Okay. So. Hold, uh, on, a minute. Hold so, on a minute. Quick question for Jim. Did they pass our bill, Jim? I'll just send it in. <laughs> I think he's just going to take us offline.